For several days, I've reported, or repeated to you, calls for ambulance drivers, stretcher bearers, and other personnel of the civilian defense. It might be useful to request the services of a good sociologist. Because if this business of repeated air raid alarms goes on, the sociological results will be considerable. This is a class-conscious country. People live in the same small street or apartment building for years and never talk to each other. The man with a fine car, good clothes, and perhaps an unearned income doesn't generally fraternize with the tradesmen, day laborers and truck drivers. His fences are always up. He doesn't meet them as equals. He is surrounded with certain evidences of worldly wealth calculated to keep others at a distance. But if he's caught in Piccadilly Circus when the sirens sound, he may have a waitress stepping on his heels and see before him the broad back of a day laborer as he goes underground. If the alarm sounds about four in the morning, as it did this morning, his dignity, reserve, and authority may suffer when he arrives half-dressed and sleepy, minus his usual defenses and possessed of no more courage than those others who have arrived in similar state. Someone, I think it was Marcus Aurelius, said something to the effect that death put Alexander of Macedon and his stable boy on a par. Repeated visits to public air raid shelters might have produced the same results. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a very good sociologist. But I can tell you this from personal experience. That siren would improve your knowledge of even your most intimate friends. London, as usual, is black tonight. One gets accustomed to it, but it can hardly be called pleasant. I don't know how you feel about people who smoke cigarettes, but I like them, particularly at night in London. That small, dull red glow is a very welcome sight. It prevents collisions and makes it unnecessary to heave to until you locate the exact position of those vague voices in the darkness. One night several years ago, I walked bang into a cow, and since then I've had a desire for man and beast to carry running lights on dark nights. They can't do that in London these nights, but cigarettes are a good substitute. For a moment tonight, I thought I was back in the London of Mr. Pickwick's time. I heard a voice booming through these dark London streets. It said, 28 Portland Place, all's well. It was an air raid warden. He'd shouted them an order to cover their window. They had done so. And so he was telling them that no more light came through. <laughs>